Hey everybody, welcome back to Jace Allen Music, and on today's episode, I'm reviewing the Epiphone J45 CE acoustic guitar, so stick around. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today I'm reviewing an Epiphone J45EC. The E is for electronics, I believe, and the C is for cutaway. As you can see, this guitar has a cutaway. I'm reviewing this guitar by accident because I was on reverb looking for a jumbo, the advanced jumbo, the Epiphone AJ220 SCE. And that's what I thought I was purchasing. And as you can see here, that's what the uh, listing showed was the AJ220. Well, what I received was a J45. Uh, so I decided to, before I sent it back, I would do a quick review on it. So one thing you need to keep in mind is Epiphone is making two different versions of these guitars. The J45 EC Studio, which is what this guitar is, retails for about $369. Uh, I was I got this one used for 300 and some change. Uh, was supposed to be a different guitar, but I guess that's beside the point. Uh, would have been 300 and some change used, but probably a floor model or something like that because it's it's I mean it's still got the plastic on the pick cover. Um, these have a solid spruce top, laminated mahogany back sides. The electronics in it is the Fishman Sonicore. Uh, with the Presys 2 preamp. And then the rest of it is, I, I think, uh, let's see, a 25 and a half inch scale length on the 4.5. The uh, fretboard material is Powo Ferro, however you pronounce that. And uh, let's see, 1.692 uh, inch nut. Uh, fretboard, 12 inch radius. Other than that, it's a, it's a pretty standard acoustic guitar. It's a nice looking guitar, you'll see in a minute. And then Epiphone also has a J45, just J45 it says, but this is the inspired by Gibson model, which is quite a bit more. Uh, this particular one doesn't have the cutaway. I don't know if they make one with a cutaway. Um, this one is all solid wood, solid mahogany backsides, solid Sitka spruce top. Say that three times fast. And then this also this has a Fishman Sonotone pickup as well. Our preamp is the Sonotone. The undersaddle pickup is the Sonicore. Um, let's see how the specs compare. This one's a 24, almost a 24 and three quarter scale length. Same nut width, same fretboard radius. Uh, this has a bone nut. This is a laurel fretboard with medium jumbo frets. Um, so there's some differences between the two. Obviously the price is is different. Um, so when you go on secondhand places like Marketplace or Reverb, uh, you gotta be very careful about what you're getting. You wanna make sure that this Inspired by Gibson, if you're looking for that particular guitar, the Inspired by Gibson, guitar, you want to make sure that it says that somewhere in the model. It'll say it on the label because um, there's people are kind of funny about how they list their the guitars and uh, sometimes they'll try to maybe, I don't know if it's uh, maybe an honest mistake or not, but they'll try to pass off just the regular studio model as the Inspired by Gibson. Apparently here they do have the, the cutaway and it's a little bit more yet. Pretty much the same specs. And like I said, what I wanted was the Advanced Jumbo, which even has different specs. I'm not sure if they make that in the Inspired by Gibson or not. Looks like they make the Hummingbird, the Dove, the J200, but not the AJ. Okay, so let's get on to reviewing this guitar. Okay, so right off the bat, I noticed some things that were not right about it because I was expecting the advanced jumbo. It doesn't say AJ up here on the uh, truss rod cover. So that was kind of the first thing that tipped me off. It's a nice looking guitar. It's got a super glossy finish on it. Um, the back and sides are mahogany, but they're kind of stained to look like rosewood. 
Uh, the Powell Ferro, however you pronounce that, fretboard is kind of nice. I like a darker fretboard. I like it to look more closer to rosewood or ebony. Um, but this isn't bad. It's got, uh, I think this is an actual rosewood ridge. Maybe not. Cutaway, obviously, it's got a uh, built-in pickup in it. Under saddle, uh, piezo pickup. Strap button on the back here. I don't like it there. I always like it on the side. Um, I wish guitar companies would just kind of leave that off and let us put them where we want them. Made in Indonesia on the side here. Tuners look like they're pretty okay. It's pretty lightweight guitar. Binding, nice th three-ply, I think it's three-ply binding all the way around and on the back. And you got the little heel plate there. Um, some of the fit and finish is a little, little funky. Um, you can see the paint line here where they masked it off. This neck is is a matte finished and this is glossy so they they had to mask off between the two finishes and you can feel you can feel where that mask was where it's not where the glossy finish meets the matte finish is kind of clunky and here you can see a little bit of the glossy finish bled into the matte finish on that uh the box says that this was made in 2021 which is you know coming out of pandemic era uh people just getting back to building and uh so that could explain some of the uh finish issues a uh, little bit of mess around the sound hole uh, you probably can't see it real good on the camera but it's kind of the finish is kind of you know built up there kind of not not perfect uh let's see what else beautiful top Real nice looking top on it. Okay, let's uh, check her out. Now this has incredibly fresh strings on it. So I got to warn you about that. Um, and I don't know what brand strings these are, if they're just super cheap strings. They don't sound real great to me. I always like strings to age a little bit before I like record with a guitar or take a guitar out to play a gig. Uh, because fresh out of the box, strings just to me sound oh, they're just so jangly and tinny they just haven't broken in yet they haven't built up a little bit of grime on them to to sort of soften the tones so keep that in mind when you hear this guitar but it also might be the guitar itself because to me the guitar sounds kind of like a cheaper guitar it doesn't i don't know you be the judge <laughs> One of the things that I listen for on an acoustic guitar is, is the bass. And if it has sort of a hollow tone to it where it doesn't ring out real well, I think that has a lot to do with the laminated wood in this particular guitar. It's just got a boxy, almost a cardboard sound to it. I, I don't even know how to describe it. loud it's it projects really well feels pretty good i don't I'm not a big fan of the real narrow nut width i like uh more of the uh, one and three quarter uh size nut because i got big gams so but it's it's not too bad Remember, this is a used used guitar. I don't see really anything wrong with it from that standpoint. To me, it's, I mean, if it is used, it maybe it was a floor model or somebody bought it and they're like, yeah, I don't want to play guitar anymore and just traded it in at, because uh, it, this is from Sam Ash. And so traded it in probably for something different or, or whatever. I mean, like I said, the plastic's not even off the pickguard yet. So, and it came in the original box with all the original tags and everything. It's basically a brand new, new guitar. Um, so I got a stereo mic set up here, uh, going right into Reaper. So I don't 
exactly know how to explain the tone that I'm hearing in this guitar that, that just feels, just doesn't sound quite right. It sounds kind of cheap to me. I don't, I don't know how to explain it other than to compare it to an all, all wood guitar. See the difference? lower anyway that this is a recording king I uh, did a review on that earlier it's an RD T16 um, all solid wood, solid mahogany, solid top. Um, really nice guitar. Uh, so, yeah, again, I don't know if it's the strings on this one or if it's the build, the fact that it's got laminated back and sides. I don't really know. Uh, for the price, it's a decent guitar. Pretty sure it's the strings the strings being so fresh on it i'd put a different pair of strings on it and try it out but i'm sending this thing back so so another thing this has is the built-in electronics in it which the recording king doesn't have so let's give those a try this is the fishman presys 2 preamp i guess you could say and uh the one thing i like about this guitar is the battery compartment is on the back and then the jack is underneath that so you don't use uh, your strap button as the jack the the jack inside the strap button is kind of cumbersome it's really kind of hard to get the strap to stay over at least that's my experience uh, so this one has and, and then the some of the pickups they have a little pouch inside velcroed to the neck block and it's really hard to get that out unless the strings are off so if you have to change a battery during a performance or something uh, kind of difficult to do so this one is kind of cool I like the fact that you can uh, easily change the battery out so a 9 volt battery goes in there I don the headphones for this got a built-in tuner string buzzing middle string could be the way I'm playing but so it sounds pretty good as far as under saddle pickups go almost sounds better plugged in than it does uh, not plugged in.
so yeah, that sounds pretty good. Uh, sounds pretty good plugged in. Almost sounds better plugged in than it does not plugged in. Um, another thing, uh, the action on it is kind of high. Most guitars, the action is high until you, you know, uh, set them where you want them, shave that saddle down. Um, the neck seems pretty straight. It's got an adjustable truss rod, so if you've got any issues there, you can always adjust that. Uh, I'd like to set my action a little bit lower than this one is set. But other than that, right out of the box, it's playable. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's the J45EC Studio by Epiphone. Okay guitar. I wouldn't say it's the best I've played. I've played some of the Epiphone Master Builts. You can see a review on one of those also on my channel. Uh, those are really well made. They sound really good. Those would hold up against like a Taylor or a Martin, in my opinion. Uh, I think the this Recording King is a step above this one. Uh, this one is definitely a step above, you know, a really, really super cheap uh, guitar. Um, real quick, let's take a look at a all laminate guitar. This is a Yamaha F325. I've d done a review on these before also. That's, this one has that boxy sound like I like I described. Sort of a hollow boxy sound. But it's a decent guitar. It's a really good good guitar for these Yamahas. So anyway, that gives you an idea. This is completely uh, laminated. Laminate top, laminate sides and everything. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of comparison. So unfortunately, the person that I bought this from, well, it's Sam Ash, they're a, like a reseller. Uh, people, I don't know, I guess they buy used guitars. People come in there and they'll give money for them, but then they resell. And they've got a reverb page, and that's where I bought, uh, so was supposed to be buying the AJ220 from, and they said that they don't have any of those. So I'm not going to get the, the guitar that I wanted in return. Uh, I'll probably just get my money back and then... Uh, look into maybe getting a jumbo or something. Uh, I know that the Inspired by Epiphone, they make the JAJ200, uh, both in a cutaway and a solid. And I've also been looking at these uh, Dove guitars and the Hummingbird guitars, which are really nice looking. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'll get another guitar in and we'll do a review on that one. But in the meantime, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.